Shadow and Bone Netflix adaptation is coming soon. How soon? Nobody knows. It's the most secret of the Netflix shows. No one can say anything about it. So incredibly secret. Not a single picture can be posted. The whole staff is under the most strict NDA agreements and blood oath. So we practically know nothing about the show since they announced the cast last year. I have videos on the cast if you'd like to check those out. I'll link those in the description. But I wanted to make a video for people who might want to read the books while they wait for the show. There is some hype about it. A lot of people might have heard about it. Maybe they are curious. The books are quite popular. Maybe you wanted to read them but couldn't be sure where to start. We'll talk about all of those in this video. We'll talk about all the books and what they are about and the order to read them. And I hope this will be helpful for some people. First of all, let's talk generally about what these books are about. They're all young adult books but Six of Crows is quite a bit darker. We'll talk about that later. Let's start with Shadow and Bone Trilogy which is the first series in this universe which is now called the Grishaverse. The word Grisha is the word used for the magic users in this world. I have a whole video explaining this magic system. I'll link it in the description in case you want to know more. There are tons of Grisha content on this channel by the way and there will be more as the show gets closer and closer. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. Especially if you are in the 85% of the viewers who are not subscribed. But anyway the Shadow and Bone trilogy is a single viewpoint story. It takes place in a place called Ravka which is a Russian inspired setting. You follow the protagonist Alina Starkov throughout the whole story. This book is a great introduction to this world and the magic system. The premise is Alina is a soldier in the first army of Ravka with her childhood friend Mal. They were both at the same orphanage when they were kids. Now Mal is super popular and Alina is not. But Alina starts to discover some powers getting the attention of the commander of the second army. So the second army of Ravka consists of all the Grisha and the commander is this mysterious powerful guy with unique powers. He is called the Darkling. I think it's a silly name but it's supposed to be super cool. He's a very serious person. The general premise of this series is that there is this huge dark region with monsters in it. It's called the Shadow Fold and it separates Ravka from everyone else and they want to destroy the fold but it gets complicated. Now this series gets mixed reviews. I think it's an interesting world. I think the magic system is fun. There are different orders of magic so you know what anyone's abilities are based on their orders. Like some people can control the tides and some people can heal or some people can stop your heart or some people can manipulate materials and create all sorts of stuff. It's fun but generally the story and the characters are very basic. Alina herself can get kind of annoying and whiny. Mal is a whole different level of problems and the Darkling is the dark brooding powerful male stereotype that you find in all YA books. It's not a super great book and the following books in the trilogy are kind of worse but I genuinely enjoyed reading the series. I think it was a lot of fun. If you manage your expectations there is a lot of great moments in this. There are some powerful moving scenes. Lee Bardugo is great at dialogue and scene writing and those exist in this book too. It is very coherent. It has a beginning, middle and end. It's easy to follow. It is short. I say don't be turned off because of the negative reviews. I don't think it's incompetent. Now moving on to the second series in this universe and that is Six of Crows. As opposed to Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows is highly acclaimed. It gets mostly positive reviews and it is a far better series. Do you need to have read Shadow and Bone before reading Six of Crows? The short answer is no. I didn't. I started with Six of Crows and I was totally fine. I was able to follow everything without any problems. Some characters from Shadow and Bone make an appearance in the second book of Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom. But I got that they were from the other book. I didn't feel I was missing anything other than fan service at those chapters. If you read Six of Crows duology first, you will get one major spoiler about the identity of a major character. I didn't think it was a big deal but it is a fun thing that happens in Siege and Storm, the second book of Shadow and Bone where a major character is introduced. You will miss that fun introduction. 
I don't think it's a big deal. Six of Crows takes place in Ketterdam, which is in Kerch. It's a different part of the world. It is Dutch inspired. It's a dark, gritty, unforgiving place where merchants have incredible power and they take advantage of everyone. Unlike Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows is a multiple viewpoint book. You get the viewpoint of all six characters and some other minor characters. The character writing in this book is second to none. They're all so well written. Also, the dialogue and the scene writing is next level. There are so many moving scenes. The humor lands so well. The banter feels natural. It's just a joy to read this book. It is pitched as a magical heist. So this group of misfits are hired to rob the most secure prison in the world and they need to figure it out. The prison is in Fierda, which is Scandinavian inspired, so you get to travel to a different part of the world and see that place too. I honestly think the plot is serviceable, it's fun and good, but it's really not the main strength of this book. It's all in the characters. Now I have to say, this book is considerably dark for a YA book. YA is 12 to 18, and I would not give this book to a 12-year-old. I see some other people saying, I thought this was supposed to be dark. This is not dark. I don't know what those people were expecting. It's not A Song of Ice and Fire or The First Law or anything like that. But it is darker than many adult fantasy books like Mistborn, for example. Like, there's a character who has to swim on his dead brother's corpse, and there's a character sold to a brothel as a teenager, I don't know what kind of darkness you're expecting. I'm saying it can get too dark for a kid. Here's the thing though, if you're one of those people who likes to read the books first, so if you want to be ahead of the show, I'm not sure you need to read Six of Crows. They're doing a weird thing where they're combining both stories. Normally Six of Crows takes place a few years after Shadow and Bone. I don't know why they're combining them. The showrunner apparently read Six of Crows first and liked it a lot. But I'm guessing they were like, we can't start the adaptation with this. We need to do Shadow and Bone first. But also, this is like much better. So they came up with a way to combine these series. We don't know what that way is because it is secret. I don't know why it's a secret. Only a select few know why. Oh, this secrecy really gives me a feeling of lack of confidence in this adaptation, but I hope I am wrong. So basically what I understand is they will do like a Six of Crows book zero type of thing and they will just make up stuff that the characters in Six of Crows were possibly doing during the events of Shadow and Bone. So you can just read the first book of Shadow and Bone and be ahead of the show, but I would like to urge you to read Six of Crows before the show, because I would like you to meet the characters as intended by the books. It is done really, really well. I honestly don't mind if they take liberties with Shadow and Bone, but I would really want them to be faithful to Six of Crows. But we'll see. I personally think you must read Six of Crows before the show so that the show doesn't ruin the experience of reading Six of Crows for the first time. Okay, so these are the main two series but I want to talk about the other books in the Grishaverse too, so that you have a complete understanding of which is which. There are two short story books. The first one is The Language of Thorns. This book is supposed to be the fairy tales that the kids in this universe read. However, I personally don't think they offer much insight to the world itself, except for one story maybe. One of the stories has sort of a different magic system that maybe we can see in the future. I don't know, but generally these are like different versions of our fairy tales. There's like a Hansel and Gretel type of story, a Little Mermaid type, a Beauty and the Beast type, and sort of the Nutcracker. Anyway, they're closer to our world than the Grisha world. I generally don't like short stories much, so I might be biased but you can skip this book. The physical version is very pretty, so that might be a reason to get it, but I don't think you're missing anything by skipping this one. The second short story book was released recently. It is called The Lives of Saints, and those are super short stories, like a couple of pages about the saints of this world. 
The Saints are basically Grisha, but people didn't really know about it back then, I guess. This book is designed like the book Alina has in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. You should not read this before reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I have a review of it if you want to check out, but this book does offer some new insight on Grisha powers and what might be possible in the future books. So I think it is interesting in that sense. The stories themselves are not very good. The design again is very pretty. If you are superficial like me, you could get it because of how it looks. Moving on, the last book I want to talk about is King of Scars. But I actually am not going to talk about it much because it would be spoilers. But I need to tell you that you cannot read King of Scars before reading both Shadow and Bone trilogy and Six of Crows duology. It will spoil both of those series for you. It is a continuation of the whole story. It has characters from both stories. You will get spoiled. It will be sad. I don't want that to happen. The next book of King of Scars is going to be released next March. It's called Rule of Wolves. If you want to catch up to that, start reading now. You need to read six books. It is what it is. You cannot jump into the series with King of Scars, not only because of spoilers, but also you will be just lost. It is too much of a direct continuation of both previous series. Anyway, this is all I have to say. Please leave a like to let me know if this was helpful. I have a whole Grisha playlist. I have reviews of most of these books and all sorts of other Grisha related content. Don't forget to check them out and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time. I am a couple place. I am a couple place. I am a couple place.